Hello, everyone. It's a new week. Um, April 10th. What are we looking at this week? Well, we got a bunch of fundamental data, economic number reports coming out this week, towards the middle of the week and the end of the week. We're going to have to see how the numbers play out, how they play out on our market. You know, we're going down, we're going up. It all comes down to inflation. Is this going to be a soft landing or is it going to be hard landing? Earnings. Earnings up. We got a whole bunch of company, companies coming out reporting. We got to see what they're reporting above expectations, below expectations, and so on. Let's take a look at the markets. Let's see where we're at. So the diamonds. I'm looking at a daily graph here. Today was, whoa. I almost got spanked over here on one of on diamonds. But look at this. So we're here at this resistance area. Okay, we've hit it already three times around the 336.25 area, right? Today, we almost hit that area more or less. We kind of just came to their close. You see that right around the 336 area. So we're kind of in a limbo area over here on the diamonds. Let's see if we have anything on the weekly. I don't think we did. We are approaching something interesting on the weekly, some sort of resistance area here. We still have ways to go. On the SPY also, we're in, this is a daily graph. We're in the middle of a limbo area. You know, you're kind of like in the middle of a tunnel. I got nothing. It's not telling me any indication. The Qs, though, on the other hand, we had a beautiful trade at the end of last week. I spoke to you guys about this around this area of resistance. It's the whole entire tunnel up, down, up, down, up, down. We kind of hit it. And we came in, whoever took those puts that we spoke about, because you don't want to maybe short the queues, you could take puts. The stock market opened up, uh, XLK was down, I had the queues and I had the XLK, the tech sector. Queues I closed, I remember Thursday, last day of the week, because I remember we were speaking about this, this trade, if you see it, you know, it was kind of middle last week. And then the... Uh, the technology sector I closed today at the beginning of the morning, which was great. Um, I still believe that they're going to come in because, you know, they ran up a lot. But let's keep an eye on this. Let's see what happens. And uh, we're going to take it from there. One, let's uh, let's just, the diamonds was a leading indicator today, okay? The Dow was a leading indicator today. The Qs were the lagger, okay? Um, and all day. The Dow was just going up from the beginning. The SPY, check this out, see, kind of came all the way back till the till the high for Thursday's high. And the Qs pretty much filled the gap. You know, filling the gap is something that you need to learn, net price, open price, uh, and filling the gap. It's something that's really, these numbers are very interesting, and sometimes they hit to the Q, to the T. You want to see something interesting to the T? Here you go. Tesla. Tesla filled the gap today. Look at that. Let me take you there. Let me take you to another land. Let's check out Tesla. Here we go. Tesla opened down on a opened on a gap down today. Just went up, went up, went up. You know, we came to the opening, to the uh, op to the high of the day. We came to the open. We kind of just went right past it. And then the open turned into a support on a five-minute bar. Look at that. See that? Because that was the open right here at 179.90. Fell all the way down to 176. Came back up. 179.90. Busted right through it. And then we turned it into a support on a five-minute bar. And then we just continued, broke out through the high of the day like it's nothing, came back up, came back down, and came back up, and then real strength. There was a lot of strength here, a lot of strength here. I, uh, you know, I'm no prophet, so I couldn't, I didn't really play this thing, but what I did do, <laughs> you might tell me I'm an idiot, right? I shorted the 185.07s. You know why? Because that was the close. The close was 185. For, what was it close 18507s there it is that was my trade you know you know where the stock went up to 18509 tesla man 
Anyways, I got this thing for 75 cents. Um, you know, it didn't really give me much. What I did do, though, which was beautiful all day. Look at that. Here's a stock we're looking at all week already since last week, right? Hey, 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 hey. What's going on here? My system. Arr. I don't know what's going on. Give me a sec. Let's fix all right, we're back. I found the chart. It just disappeared. <clears throat> anyway, so what am I looking at here? So I'm looking at Riven. We had the stock go up from 1260, something around there, all the way up to 1585, more or less. The stock started coming in the end of last week. And today we hit, uh, I don't know what I had here, some sort of support. You guys have seen this graph before. So, you know, you've got the same supports that I do, right? Stock opened up in the morning right away. It's coming in. Because Tesla was down a lot, RIVN is a you know uh, also a rival of Tesla, and uh, the whole entire day stock goes up. Why? Because it's a small stock. Usually, it follows what Tesla does. So then you could just buy it on dippings, and that's what you need to do. You need to try and buy it on dippings. So if you didn't catch the morning trade somewhere around here between four fifteen and four dollars, which are where our supports are. Which would give you an average of about four oh, you know, ten more or less. It would have been not that that's the average between two, but you know, between what I'm seeing here, because they didn't go exactly to fourteen dollars. I see it stopped like fourteen oh four more or less. So let's say you got an average about four ten. This was an amazing trade. You could have even added. That's how strong it was. General Motors was really strong today, up three percent. Ford was up today, three percent. You know, these are stocks that. You got mad money going into these things, funds, hedge funds, and, and big investment firms, market makers. Everyone's just buying. When they buy, they buy with a lot, a lot of volume. Um, So that's the stock that I traded instead of buying Tesla. I just bought Riven, right? We've been talking about this stock already for, for a few weeks now. So keep an eye on that. It's always a great stock to trade, especially if you don't know what you're doing with this with Tesla. Um. All right, let's move on. Next one we had was NYCB. NYCB jumped at me. You know, this stock is, we've been looking at it also quite some time. NYCB jumped at me because I saw a block trade. A block trade went off, I think it was 870 something, 870. I saw two block trades go off at 870, which kind of made me jump in there because the stock came in all the way from 890 to 865. And the KRE didn't want to go down. The stock didn't want to go down. I followed these block trades, and the stock ended up going up for about ten cents. But this kind of stock, you know, when it's not really moving, you and you put a small stop loss, take as much volume as you want. It's very liquid stock, uh, so that pretty much works in your in your favor. Um, look at this one. This one was really really interesting. H, what was this? H C N W F, right? Um, where am I taking you? Let me take you to that graph. All right, H C N W F, right? H C N W F. This stock, I mean, I gotta tell you. This is something. What does the stock do? Summary. There was a summary. No summary. I had to go into Yahoo Finance to look what this thing does. Something with batteries. Yes, batteries in Canada. They uh, Not batteries. Charging stations in Canada. This is a pink sheet. Hard to borrow. You can't even borrow this thing. Went up from 20, some 30, something cents, and all the way up to 450 today. But look at the way this thing traded. Amazing. Just out of this world. Look at this thing. Look at that. All right. So it's jumping up. It's jumping on my radar again for like the fifth day. Uh, trading, trading, trading. And then it starts going up slowly, but surely, right? So I'm telling myself, okay, just get in there, put in a 27 cent stop loss and see what happens. Jumping into the stock, 27 stop cent stop loss. So that's 10% for a stock that's like 270. It's a lot of money, by the way. And the stock just keeps going up and going up and going up and going up. But you got to put in, you got to put in a trailing stop when you're trading a stock like this, because when it's going to collapse, it's going to collapse. I mean, this is, a, this print wasn't real, this right here, but 
but it came all the way back down to about 230, 220. I didn't touch it at that point. It was, you know, it was up 100% today at some point. Uh, but I did look for all charging station uh, companies that I found, a whole bunch of them. You guys should look at those. Uh, those are some interesting companies out there that are worth pennies, um, cents on the dollars. Bitcoin, uh, GBTO, BI, uh, GBTC, BITO. They were going up today. <clears throat> Let's take a look at those. So here we are, right? Started off the day quietly, broke up a high of the day, ranging again, ranging again. See this little pull in, little bull flag, little bull flag, time after time, one more time, one more time. Look at this. Time after time, because we know that the Bitcoin as of late, right? It's on an uptrend every single day, almost every single week at least. So we got to keep an eye on Bitcoin. And we can buy these ETFs during the day, trading day as a stock, which is great. So you're coming in there. You could just, you've seen the, the stock breakthrough resistance we keep speaking about. I hate buying breakthroughs because there's a lot of risk there. But then when the stock is coming in and sort of giving you some sort of support, you know, it's trading 17 something to 1695. And then it breaks out. You could jump in and put a stop loss right below the 1690. And the same thing happened here, okay? As soon as it pops up, you could just buy it at 17 of the break, 1704, and put a stop below 1694, 95. So that's, you're buying the break, but at least you're not buying the break when it goes right through resistance after it went up 50 cents, like right around here, right? Let's say there was a, a monthly high, and we'll look for that in a second. Uh, here, I'll make it a little smaller so I can get an example. Let's say there was a daily high, which a weekly high. Here, we'll do the weekly one. So the weekly high was, uh, what was that high? Six, uh, 1702, you know? So you're buying the break of 1702. Sometimes it's coming in from 1650. You're buying 1702. Support of 1650 is 50 cents. It's a lot. So you got to, you want to be able to wait for resistance to turn into a support. And then, you know, you have a smaller stop loss, which helps you as a trader so bitcoin let's keep an eye on that um i had one more we're going to look at it for tomorrow spnt okay spnt we're going to keep an eye on that for tomorrow this stock was pretty strong today but it didn't break out so um keep an eye on this this is on a monthly graph you see this if this can actually take take off some more it looks to me like it could go all the way up to like 860 area 867 area so keep an eye on that hope everyone enjoyed today's trading session and if you want to see me live you could join the class we have classes obviously you know none of this is um <clears throat> recommendations to trade but you could actually watch a class uh hit the link at the uh which should be on the banner See you tomorrow. Have a great day.